How are we all this morning? All right, I'm just going to track with the Holy Spirit. I encourage you to come along on the journey. Um, I don't really want to look at you too much because I'm just trying to track what he's doing. It's easy to look at the flesh. It's easy to look at the outward appearance. But we have to be people who are sensitive to the heart of the Father. And so this morning, I just want to encourage us all and those who are online, let's be a people who are so sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Can I hear an amen? I mean, I just, I want to be a part of a church community that is known as the people who understand, thank you, Alan, people who understand who God is and what he is doing. We are in this challenging place as people where we are surrounded by noise. Do you know that? You are surrounded by continual noise. And last night I was chatting with Tommy Herbert, great young man of God, and we're talking about being people of overflow in the kingdom, people who understand that we actually are called to come together on a Sunday with a heart of overflow from our week. Do you know that? And together there's a corporate anointing that we're blessed together, but it's your quiet time with the Father that actually causes you to overflow in your ministry and in your favour. And Jesus showed this because he often went, often went to isolated places. Often he disappeared. And then he gave his overflow to the people. It wasn't like the people were the main thing and then the Father was secondary. It was he was disappearing all the time. It says in the Bible to isolated places and he would plug in, you know, power in the wall, in the socket, and then when he was with the people, he gave out of an overflow. And I feel like for our church community, there's these amazing prophetic words and calls and anointings, but we have to become disciplined and intentional about being an overflow people. And I know this because in my own walk, when I'm really busy or when I'm stressed or when I'm discouraged or whatever, and I, and I have a busy week and I get to Sunday and I haven't had that, that time with the Father the way I've needed to, this becomes the moment of plug-in, and God's blessing is still there, but what's on this house is actually to be a place and a people that um, the broken walk in, and you're overflowing to the person next to you. I, I know that message isn't the easiest message, because we actually just want to be in a church where we receive. And a natural instinct is that. We just want to, I just want to, but the Holy Spirit says, no, no, remember you're a well. Like, you're called to, to, to give fresh water of kingdom water. So you have to therefore be hydrated. Now, on an aeroplane, you'll hear them say, um, if we're about to crash and the oxygen masks fall from the roof, what do they say? They don't say, look after your baby first. They don't say, look after your toddler first. What do they say? They say, put your own mask on. Like, forget about my son for a second. I'm most important right now. Why? Because when I'm oxygenated, I can then help him. It's, but it's so anti as a dad. And all the dads know this. Because you're just like, no, nah, my kids, no, no, like, I'll do anything to look after. No, no, listen. Like the stewardess, the steward's like, no, no, listen. Look after you, mask. And then you can look after the person next to you. So what I'm trying to encourage you, and it's not the word today, but it's definitely a word in season, I think, is to be an overflow people where our walk with God personally in the privacy of our prayer time, what, is the, what did Jesus say? He said, go into the bedroom and close the door and what your father sees is done in secret will reward you. He, he doesn't say go to church and lift your hands high and when I see you there, I'll reward you. Although he is blessed by that if it is backed with going to your prayer closet. Are you a prayer? Young people, are you a prayer? Are we studying the Word of God? And so when we get to a Sunday, you have enough margin and flow going through you that the Holy Spirit says, look to your left. Okay, now I want you to give them this Word. I want you to pray for them. They actually have healing they need. They've got a, a sore leg that they're struggling with. I want you to... And God gives you an insight and the overflow of your favour becomes a blessing to that person. Until we become an overflow church, we won't become an overflow church. (laughs) 
until we become so one-on-one, filled. Because the Bible says this. It says, it says, give and it will be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Psalm says, my cup overflows. So we're called to be a church that through the rivers of God, through the Holy Spirit, we are just overflowing. This morning, you'll get the best from me if I give you my overflow from my time with God. If this time is my quiet time, good luck to you. You might get some blessing, but you won't get the blessing that necessarily you could get. So we have to be intentional. And, 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 and Pastor Joel said it just then. We get distracted when we get breakthrough. We see God doing miracles. We see the church going forward. We see, you know, our church has grown since January 30%. Now this morning it's not a great representation of that. It's why. We literally sit... Joel and I chatted to me. He goes, why? Like, well, because God is doing something. But with that comes opposition, distraction, discouragement, personal battles, noise, temptation. And what happens is you start getting distracted from li- like living in the river So now you're back in the wilderness because you're distracted by someone that doesn't actually matter. So prophetically as a church, let's be wise. And the simple action is this. And I've said it it a few times. When you're watering the garden, if you water the garden, more of you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I honor your presence. You're in the cubicle at work on the computer. I honor your presence. I take a moment to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your favor. You know, you're walking the dog. You have a lot of thank you. Thank you for who you are. And it says, which I'm getting to the end of the sermon at the start, but he inhabits the praise of his people. I mean, who here wants to be in a church that is inhabited by God? Well, the more thankful we are, the more he inhabits You know that? The more gratitude we have, the healthier we get. When I get discouraged and I get negative and I start seeing the issues, I just got to start being thankful. It's amazing how many times people will go on a holiday and they'll go somewhere else and they'll visit other churches and they'll go, come home and they'll say, oh, the church was great I went to, but I'm really thankful for home. And it's not until you get out of it that you understand the blessing of the community you're in and the presence of God that's upon us. So let's be overflow people. Let's come to Sundays filled up from the week of spending time with the Father that we might overflow to those around us. That we might have enough margin. Because I know what it's like when you don't do that and you come to Sundays and you're trying to catch up. Like, it's like you're just trying to get above water. And some seasons feel like that, don't get me wrong. Some are really, it's you've got to work out hard at it. But as a discipline, let's be overflow people. Yeah. Yeah, very good. <laughs> we serve a God of more than enough. Yeah. I love that. I love that our God isn't just like, you have a little cup of rice and some stale water and that will get you through. Yeah. It's a God of more than enough. By the way, Pastor Paul and Michelle, that word, word this morning, I just felt that. That's prophetically generational blessing. I just, it was so powerful. I just encourage you with that. It's recorded, so you can have a little listen to it. But man, woo. There is a generational blessing on your family of ministers of the gospel, I believe, powerfully. Oh. Is it okay this morning? All right, all right, hey. Um, so we're not concluding favor series next week. We're going to go into Easter talking about the favor of God because what's more favorable than Jesus dying on the cross and rising again? So we're going to just, it's going to be a great time to bring your unsaved friends and family. We have to, again, be really great at not just being people who enjoy the feast or the banquet, but remember our job isn't to enjoy the banquet right now. 
by itself. It's actually to invite people to the banquet. Like in heaven, you can pig out forever. Yeah? You can be a hungry, hungry hippo in heaven. But we have an opportunity on earth, and the parables is so clear about this. Go out and invite. Go out and invite. Go out and invite. Go out and bring. Because the wedding feast is there for not just us, but for those who are broken, those who are hurting. I know for Charlie... Uh, Pastor Charlie, she's been in texting unsafe people from work, from school, from different places, or from, well, she's a teacher, so it's other stuff, uh, from her old school as well, like different things, different family, which, to, to the women's night tonight. Just come and sit, come and be blessed, come and, like, so we're trying to outlive it, let's just be bringers of people, so that when we have a nice, awesome banquet, we actually say, hey, there's a seat next to us. Um, and we're always fighting this for 30, oh, well, I'm, I'm 38 this year. So all my life I've watched the church battle this thing of trying to get the church to bring. And it's just such an anti-cultural thing because we just don't, it's, what if we get rejected? What if it's hard? What if they say no? Just make it part of your life. Just Great. invite, 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 invite. And let the Holy Spirit lead you because yeah. that's been obedient to the parable of invitations to the banquet. Ooh, okay, all right, I'll get into it now. A few weeks ago, um, Dr. Reverend Norell um, spoke a great word about favour. And if you missed it, you missed it. So make sure you go on the podcast and listen to it. Um, it was a lot of great teaching, a lot of, there's probably about 10 sermons in one sermon. Um, and one thing really stood out to me in that, which I'm going to expand on this morning, which she spoke about how the favour of God is seen on people. Moses shone with the, you know, the glory of God. And she put a party hat on. Remember that, if you're here? Talking about how you can see favour. Talking about Proverbs. So we're going to look into that this morning and just talk about how as kingdom people, you can see favour on kingdom people. And if you can't see favour on someone, I don't know what's going on, but there should be favour on us as kingdom people. So... Let's just look at this word. I don't know how to pronounce it in Hebrew. Hen. I'm going to say the Aussie equivalent, hen, which I guess, which means to wear the favour of God. And we have to understand this. To understand God's favour, we must understand that he places his favour upon us. It is upon us that his favour is placed. Let me give you some scriptures. All these scriptures um, are using the word hen for favour, which is to wear the favour of God. So I'm going to read these to you. They'll be up on the screen. You can write them in your notes. But Proverbs 1, 7 and 9 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother, for they will be a graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. So graceful ornament is the word hen, which is favour. So favour is placed upon you. In the New American Standard, I don't know if it's up there, the, the Hebrew writing at all. I don't know if it's in the notes, Troy. Uh, it's not in the notes, sorry. Sorry, don't worry. Yep, it's all good, man. I just realised. Um, but basically, different translations talk about it differently. The New American Standard says... They are a graceful wreath. King James says, an ornament of grace upon thy head. Um, different translations, but the same word, which is favour or grace. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3 and 4 says, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favour and a good name in the sight of God and men. Again, word hen, which is... Uh, to see or to wear the favour of God. Who wants to wear the favour of God this morning? Yes. Proverbs 4, 7 and 9. Wisdom is a principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honour. When you embrace her, she will place on your head an ornament of grace or hand, favour, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Pretty cool, hey? If you've got your Bibles, turn to Psalm chapter 90, verse 17. 
Psalm 90, verse 17. When you got it, just tell me you've got it. I'm going to start bringing a paper Bible to church. I can see a paper Bible over here. You might hear some rustling going on in church. If you want to start bringing paper Bibles back, let's do it if you, if you haven't for a while. It says this in Psalm 90, 17. It says, May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us, establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. I've got a bit of an illustration this morning. Yeah, let's have a little look in here. It's, uh, uh, here we go. I've got a box of shapes. And I don't know if you knew about shapes, but their slogan is actually flavor you can see. And this morning's message is favor you can see. But the question is, what was your favorite flavor you can see of shapes? All right, so we've got any barbecue people in the house. All right, Becky G, this is for you. Yeah, at the end, I'll give it to you. Well, someone will give it to you. All right, we've also got some. I think pizza shapes are the best. That's right, because you can see the flavoring. Flavor you can see. <coughs> chicken crimpy. Yeah, I, I didn't mind a bit of chicken crimpy back in the day. Hey, these health ratings are so good as well. Two out of five star. I think barbecue was one out of five. And then, and then you had these like, you had these ones like nacho cheese. I can see the flavour. I can see it. Any nacho cheese fans? Any cheese and bacon fans? Okay, okay, all right. Let's all take it easy. We've got our original savoury. Boo! <laughs> I can't even see any flavour on that. It doesn't even say it on there. It's true to its branding. There's no flavour you can see. Okay, don't be the original savoury. That can be the... Yeah, un, yeah. You got the cheddar. Yeah? Oh, okay, Christy Fruit, that one will be for you. And then you got Vegemite and cheese. Any Vegemite and cheese people? Oh, there you go. All right, can I get Tommy and... Mr. Clifton, can we come over here? Can we just give that one to the over here behind Mark? The Harrow. Sorry, which one was? Oh, Chris Diffith was Cheddar, wasn't she? Yeah. That's right. Who was the nacho cheese? My little footy mate over here. Chicken crimpy. Cheese and bacon. All right, back row centre. Oh, thanks, bro. Who was the boring original? Yeah, ah, oh, Steve Southam. Yeah. <laughs> Beth is a young mother. She needs all the help she can get. So, there you go. Barbecue. Barbecue. Shell. All right. Flavor you can see. Flavor you can see. Favor you can see. I just love the kingdom of God that just like those shapes will have different flavors, there's different types of favor. I, I, I love it. Like in, in Charlie and my, we're, we're, in our life, we're rich when it comes to having different people around us with different favor. And we have people with different people I look to, I speak to. I just... It's so important when you see the favour of God on someone just to acknowledge it and just to be thankful for it and to enjoy it, have a bit of a taste. Who here remembers their school lunchbox? 
What did you have in your school lunchbox? Were there any, uh, any Dunkaroo people in the room? Were there any roll-up people in the room? Any cheese stringers? Yeah, Haley Shaw would do that. Haley Mahara, I'm sorry. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Cheese stringers. Anyone have chip sandwiches? Any less snack people in the house? Less snack. French for the snack, I think. All right, who are the celery and carrot people? Were there any Uncle Toby's muesli bar people in the house? Yeah. What about Tiny Teddies? What were the, Nadia, what would you have at your lunchbox at school? Exactly. That's why, well, what was back, what was the lunch, typical lunchbox back when you were at school? What was it? Oh, bark. I think it said lard. A nice, hey, what was it? Homemade cakes? Oh, that, yeah, Waro had the homemade muffins. Right. Back when mums used to make things for their kids instead of... Oh, sorry. Sorry. My, <laughs> listen, my mum made things for me, but they were like bolognese on a piece of bit of bread or something. It wasn't a muffin or a cake. Sorry, all the mums. Whoa, Hello. And then you had those rich kids that had things like Yogos, Ovaltine packets, LCMs. The rich kids had LCM bars, if you don't know what they are. They're... And then you had the really rich kids who had the lunch orders. It wasn't my family. But then you have the weird lunch order kid that always buy a sandwich in the lunch order and you think, what are you doing? <laughs> different favours, different favourites, different things, different expressions. When it comes to kingdom, we all carry something different. Yeah. When it comes to kingdom, the favour of God is poured out upon us and it's seen upon us. We're going to look at some examples of this. But in Psalm 90, 15, I just read it then, but... It says, may the favour of the Lord rest on you and establish the works of your hands. You know, the word for favour here is actually noam, N-O-A-M. It'll be up on the screen, I think, which is a Hebrew word. It actually means pleasantness or beauty. The word Naomi comes from this Hebrew word. And I love this because it's talking about the favour, may it rest upon you, may the beauty of the Father rest upon you to establish the works of your hands. And when the world looks at the church, when it looks at the kingdom, it should see the beauty of God. I think, unfortunately, we have had histories where the world has looked at the church and seen ugliness. And let's not forget that the church is called to be the bride of Christ. Um, I got married to a beautiful bride, and... She got done up for me. She got up early. She got her hair done. She got her makeup done. Other things done probably. Got ready. All I did was wake up and put a tie on. Maybe brush the hair or something. She took preparation, time, expense. Now, if Charlie turned up, at the Kiama Seabull, we got married at the Kiama Seabull, outside on the grass. Some of you were there. If she turned up with like a full-on muddy dress, dirty feet, dirty knees, like she's been you know, doing skids on the, her knees on the grass. If she, hadn't washed for, if she hadn't washed for weeks, and she walked down that aisle on Alan's arm, I don't know how I would have went. It would have been vows. It would have been vows in faith. 
for the potential of what I think you could have been. <laughs> now, the bride of Christ is a bride, but often she's messy, she's dirty, she's dysfunctional, she's disunified, she's, she's hurting herself, she doesn't, and it's the body of Christ hasn't learned the beauty of the favour of God upon them, the fact that there is a noam, favour, or beauty of God when it comes to favour upon us. And the bride of Christ is called to be beautiful, lovely, pleasant. When unsaved, unchurched people come into the church, they should sense love and unity and community, encouragement, joy, peace. But all these things, and every bride here who's been a bride knows it's intentional. You have taken time to be a beautiful bride. So, so often we do training as a church or ministry, and so often it's about, hey, let's, let's get beautiful. Because we're called to be a radiant bride. Because Jesus deserves a radiant bride, a bride that is favoured. Now, what does Proverbs say? It says that a wife is a gift from the Lord and shows favour. The bride is a gift from the Father to the church, to Jesus, and it shows favour. So let's work hard at being a beautiful bride. How do we do that, church? We forgive. <laughs> when, when we hurt each other, we actually say sorry and we say we love you and we walk forward. We encourage, we speak life, we build up, we cover each other. When someone falls over, we don't expose their shame. Instead, we love covers a multitude of sin. I mean, we don't excuse everything, but we go, let's help them get better. And we become this forgiving, beautiful, free, joyful um, bride that becomes attractive to the groom. This isn't in my notes, but I think it's special. I think it's God's heart for us. And the favor of God, the Noam, or the Naomi, the word comes from that, is the beauty of God the favour of God placed upon us to establish the work of our hands. So we have the ornament of grace, the ornament of favour in Proverbs, which is the hen, and then we have the beauty as an additional favour placed upon us as the noam to help establish the works of our hands. So to have the favour of God is to carry the beauty of God. Why don't you say that to your neighbor? To have the favor of God is to carry the beauty of God. It'll be up on the screen if you could, Troy. Yeah, that's awesome. It's the second point. When we carry God's favor, others see it. And when we carry the favor of God, others see the beauty of God upon us. There's three different areas today that I want to encourage you, you with when it comes to the favor of God upon us. If you have your, your Bibles, why don't you turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 46 and 47. This is really cool. It says this. It says, Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. Now this is the early church. This is the closest thing we have to revival breaks out and then the early church is established. So if there's goals, if there's church goals, it's these goals. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Why do we do connect groups? Because it's the community of God breaking bread in smaller settings. Remember, 3,000 were saved in a day. So three, that's a big crowd. But to go into someone's home is more intimate. Let's encourage each other on a smaller scale. And let's break some bread or pizza together and enjoy some communion. It says they were glad and sincere in heart, talking about the overflow, sincerity, spending time with the Father, and then that overflowing, praising God, and what? Enjoying the favour of all the people. It says, and the Lord added to the number daily those who were being saved. So since we started speaking about favour as a church, the church has grown 30%. I know because I see our books. Why? Because when... Favor rests on a house, numbers start to, people start getting added because the bride of Christ starts to expand. 
And that's just the way the kingdom is. People get saved. God adds to their numbers. People are enjoying community, gladness, sincerity, praising God, and enjoying favour with all the people. How awesome. Who wants? So the first point is this. When we have the favour and the beauty of God upon us, we receive favour with the people. Who wants favour with the people? Imagine as a church community, where we walked, we encountered favour with people. Favour is fun. It's so, it's just, it's open. Remember the definition that we're going with this year is, it's, um, 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 it's, it's kind, God's kindness, demonstrated kindness, being poured out, which leads to presence, promotion, provision, and protection. So you imagine if we, see that across our whole life with people and with God. Remember that Jesus, it says, as he grew, grew in favour with what? With God and with people. (laughs) I'm a Christian, so everyone's meant to hate me. Listen, some people are not going to like you. The Bible says that. But some people are going to show you favour. And favour is undeserved. So when I was in Bible college, the college I was in, there was about 700 students at the time, and I was a first-year student coming in from Nara. I would youth pastor on the weekends, and I would go to college Monday to Friday, drive home, do youth, do the weekend at home, do church on Sunday, do Monday here at church as an intern slash youth pastor, and then I would drive back up to Sydney for Bible college. And we had chapels every day, and there was a lot of students, and God was doing some great things and I remember just feeling very small. And I was like, I'm just a little kid from now, I felt like. And I remember it came to, I was there for a term, and I was in a, a lecture, and, and the lecturer spoke about the, it was, it was something to do with the power of the Holy Spirit, and it really impacted me. And so I, I, found, I got his email, and I sent him an email, and I just said, I just want to say thank you for today because it really impacted my life. I'm a big believer in showing gratitude. You know that as, as if you've been in this church for any... I'm a big believer in being the one leper that came back and said thank you. So I went out and, and I went back and I said thank you. Anyway, he was so blown away by the fact someone said thank you <laughs> that he said, hey, can we get coffee? And this class had hundreds, like probably 200 students in it. Said, said, no worries, let's get coffee. And that started a relationship and a journey with this person who later became a mentor to me where he really helped me grow. And often when I sp- think about fatherhood, I think about how this man was a father. But the interesting thing was, I wasn't looking for favour. And they had these things called head students. And they were the kind of... I don't know, like, and you had to be a second year or third year Bible college student to become a head student. And in the second term, they said, hey, do you want to become a head student? And I was like, but you're not meant to in your first year. And they said, no, it doesn't matter. We want you to be a part of helping lead the whole college. And my training in that was I then had to lead the chapels of 700 students, and, 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 and my, my capacity expanded. And I got to sit in these leadership meetings with their core team and be exposed to greater things because, not because I had anything really to give or because I was someone who paid my way in or worked my way in. I was a new student. But there was favour that was placed upon me. There was favour with men. And that's a powerful thing. It changed the course of my training. And today I want to speak over us as a church community, favour with people. May the beauty of God, the favour of God be on you. May the Noam, I'm going to say the Naomi, the Naomi of God be so on you, the beauty of him, that people are attracted to the beauty of God on your life. (laughs) May his... Naomi, rest upon us, to establish the work of our hands, the favour of God. The second thing is this, if you're in 
got your Bibles, Exodus chapter 3, verse 21. I'm just going to probably read it, but if you want to turn there, you can. Speaking about the Israelites in, with the Egyptians, and it says this. It says, I will give this people favour in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall be when you go, you shall not go empty-handed. Exodus chapter 11, verse 3 says, And the Lord gave the people favour in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. Exodus 16, 3 says, When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, actually, can you just check the scripture over here, someone? Let's make sure it's right. When he takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies to make peace with them. So we see this example here. I think it might be Proverbs. You see this example here where the Israelites are under slavery in Egypt. They're about to be freed, and the favor of God is poured out upon the people of God. And the Israelites get set up generationally because of the favor of God. Exodus 16.3 is the, the check. It's all good? Yeah. Proverbs, thank you. I knew that. Proverbs 16.3. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies to make peace with them. So the Israelites and the Egyptians are enemies. And then God's favor comes, and the Israelites are freed, but not just freed, are given the wealth of the Egyptians. Track with me for a sec. The second point, as you can see, is favor with your enemies. God's favor came upon the people of God, and then he says, to, to, he, he, he touches the hearts of the Egyptians. And they give all this wealth to the Israelites who are a slave people yeah. with nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So they are sent out into their destiny enriched by the world, yeah. enriched by their enemies. Yeah. You imagine if your enemies enriched you to the point where it changed the generations of wealth that came after you. Yeah. You imagine if your enemies paid for your mortgage and your children's mortgage, and their children's mortgage. This is the power of favour when it comes to his beauty resting upon us. And in Proverbs it says, when the Lord takes pleasure in a man's way, he even causes the enemies to be at peace with them. I remember uh, when I was fresh out of school and I was looking for work, and I was, would have been 18, and I went to an employment agency in Nara. and the la- I had a, there was a lady, it was an appointment, it was, you have to wear a tie, you have to sit down with this lady, and her job was to get you a job. And this lady just was so rude to me. She ripped into me from the get-go, and I was really nice. I was very, I'm, I'm quite a nice person, I think, quite personable. And she went, are you wasting my time? I see people like you coming here all the time, you young people, no work ethics, you don't care, you're just doing it for, you know, to, so you can apply for the doll, you can just blah, 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 blah. And, and I'm there going, aren't you meant to be helping me? <laughs> and I'm underplaying this, by the way. This lady, like, oh, how can I, you know, oh, you know the Weakest Link show, the, the lady on the Weakest Link, the host? It's like that lady, but times 100. No smile, look straight at the eye and just rip in. Anyway, she said, and she showed my resume, she said, what is this rubbish? She's like, this should be in the bin. And I'm like, that's, that's a resume they told us to do at school. Like, I don't, I don't know. And she's like, this is, this is the, she, literally, she goes, oh, this is one of the worst resumes I have ever seen. This is our first, first appointment. She said, go home, read to your resume, come back in a week. Book another appointment on your way out. I was like, oh, man. Like, I went in there, like, and she just, she really treated me unfairly. She really hurt my little feelings. <laughs> went back in there a second week. She had the same thing again, but she was a little bit less intense, a little bit more helpful. Went back in a third time, and she says, true story, she says, 
She goes, I really gave it to you because I wanted to see what was in you. And she said, I've got connections in this town and I don't want to give you to an employer if you're not going to be up for it because you will wreck my reputation. So I wanted to put you through the fire to see if you would still turn up. Then, uh, I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> My $5 tie from Kmart. Like, what, uh, this. She said, well done. She said, I've got two jobs from really, like, really successful narrow businessmen and I reckon if I put your name forward, you'll get them. I was like, okay. All because I turned up and I did what I needed to do. But I tell you, those first two meetings, we felt like enemies. But God's favour was actually working in the midst of it. And I very, very easily could have went, forget you. I'll just get my own job. I don't need this employment agency. Like, whatever. Like, we don't need to speak to me. I could have been the victim. But I, maybe I was dumb or maybe I was godly. I don't know. But I just kept turning up. And it proved to her that she could entrust me to her connection she had worked many years to build in our town. And through that, I got a, a job that I should never have gotten. I beat 50 other applicants. You had to be advanced at mathematics. I didn't even do mathematics in my HSC. I hated math so much, I didn't even do it. Give me design and tech any day of the week. Don't need mathematics. Hey? No. <laughs> and, yeah. And the favour of God was just poured out. And I got this job in this finance, in finance, which is always something I thought about, getting a job in the finance sector, underqualified, BMB in headlights, fresh out of school. But because of this lady's favour, a lady who I, I don't think she was a Christian, her language in that office wasn't very Christian, but because of that, the favour of God opened up doors for my future. When God's favour rests upon us, you have favour with your enemies. Yeah, now, I know I'm over time, so let me just quickly finish. The last one is this, favour with authority. It says in Daniel 1 verse 9, it says, when, Now God had caused the official to show favour and compassion to Daniel. Daniel... The book of Daniel obviously is written about Daniel. He was someone that found favour with the king, with authority, with the kingdom. He is the one that was Daniel in the lion's den, that story. But if you read his story, God's favour was upon him and he was <coughs> raised up to be a great influencer in the land. When God's beauty and favour is upon us, it's shown with those in authority. Yeah. Last example, and I've got a whole another section, but I won't get there. When we um, went on our trip last year, we flew with a little two-and-a-half-year-old, a, a red-eye flight. We, we left Bali at 10 p.m. We arrived in Singapore at 2 a.m., jumped on another plane at 3.30 a.m., and then flew to Zurich, which is the other side of the world, literally. And when, you're, when you get off a 24-hour flight with a two-and-a-half-year-old and my wife and me, who are all probably a bit grumpy, probably a bit over it, and then you turn up to customs, we turned up to Zurich Customs, and the lineup was two to three hours long. And so you're there with your little two-and-a-half-year-old, you're trying to keep him entertained just for ten minutes. And you've gotten through the flight, you've gotten through the red-eye flight, you've finally arrived, you can see the finish line, and then you see this line up. Just... And we stood there, and we're like, oh no. And he was on the edge, my son was on the edge. And we're like, oh, this is not good. And then, the favour of God was on us. And this policeman saw us, came over to us. He walked past other kids and other families, over to us and said, hey, you guys, come with me. And I thought we were in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and not exaggerating, he walked us past this two, three hour long line, crying kids, just chickens. It was just that type of atmosphere. I was just, everyone's upset. Walked us past everybody to the side gate and said, here you go, guys. And we were in, at an airport in five minutes. And we were like, literally, we're like, and when you're at that level, you're like, you get teary. You're like, thank you, God. Like, that would have been a really bad experience starting this trip as opposed to what just happened. And that happened half a dozen times on our trip where, where there was randoms coming up to us and saying, hey, come this way or, and helping us or whether it was people in authority like that policeman, the favour of God was just upon us. Nearly every car we hired got upgraded. Like, just little things, like good, good things. Little things that meant a lot to you as a parent. <laughs> and you're like, thank you, God, for looking after us. And this morning, I just want to encourage us that God's favour is upon us. And the last point is this. In Exodus 33, it speaks about Moses. And he says, God, if I find favour with you, let your presence go with me. And he says, how can the world distinguish your people from everyone else but your presence going with me? And that word for favour is the word hem. It's the word God's favour placed upon you. God, unless your presence is placed upon me, your favour manifested, your presence, how can the world see me different to the other person in the checkout line, the other person filling up petrol, the other person in the workplace? What is the difference? It's not that you have better teeth or a better smile or a better complexion. That might be the case, but it's probably not. Maybe it is. It's actually the presence of God upon us. It is the favour, the hen and the Naomi, Naomi, beauty of God upon us. So how do we carry his presence? We carry his presence in Psalm chapter 22, verse 3. You are holy, you inhabit the praises of your people. Gratitude will cause favour to rest upon your family, upon your heart, upon your workplace, upon our church. If we become a church of thankfulness and gratitude and praise and worship, He inhabits the praises of His people. The favour that Moses carried was the presence of God and the favour that we carry is the presence of God. It is the one X factor we have. Students in your school, it's not your great personality. It's the presence of God. For those who are working in workplaces, it is His presence on you. Just like His glory shone upon Moses, let His favour shine upon you. For mums and dads, for your family, it is the presence of God which is founded in gratitude and worship. So this morning, I just think as a church, let's take a moment to come before Him with hearts of gratitude. (laughs) Knowing that when we are grateful, His favour and grace rest upon us. We become greatly aware of His favour and grace. There's one more slide from Troy, if you want to put it up on the screen. We're going to be doing a... Have we printed these out? We're going to be doing as a church, as part of this gratitude, a devotional leading up to Easter. It's a 10-day devotional, 14-day devotional on the cross, the power of the cross. And we're going to start it tomorrow. Um, is that, is that um, QR code there anywhere, Troy? We have printed out versions at the back for anyone who wants to have one. There'll be a QR code on our website. Oh, sorry, a link on our website. It's a U version, again, U version devotional that every day, if you log in, 
You can leave comments and encouragements about that daily devotional. But we thought leading up to Easter, it could be a way that we enjoy the favour of God together. The last one was cool, hey? We saw a breakthrough with prayer and fasting, our last devotional. So I'm excited for this one. And there will be printouts at the back um, for us to do together. I'm just waiting for this. It's all right. We'll text it to you guys. We'll put it on our church website. Why don't we stand to our feet? Thank you, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy of all the praise. Oh, why don't you take a moment just to, just to show gratitude, just to start to thank Him and praise Him. You are worthy, Lord. We honour you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness, Lord. We thank you for your mercy. And our Lord, we thank you for your favour. We thank you for your loving kindness. Oh, we thank you for your overflow, Lord. If you can speak in tongues, why don't you speak in tongues for a few minutes? Let's just enjoy the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We honour you. We worship you. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you for your favour, for your beauty. Oh, Lord, we wear it as a garment, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, bless our church community, Lord. Bless our city, Lord. I pray everybody, Lord, would just encounter a fresh uh, favour with, with people, Lord, with authority, Lord, with their enemies, with those that are challenges to them. I pray, Lord, that they'll be faithful with family members. Oh, Lord, may they be faithful with business and open doors, with finances. And most of all, Lord, favour with your presence. Oh, let us be a presence people, Lord. Oh, we honour you. Lord, we thank you. You know, just as we end, I just, I want to always make room for some ministry. I just, I think God's doing something with ministry at the moment. So why don't we get into groups of like three or four and let's pray the favour of God over each other in Jesus' name. And mix it up a bit. If you're at the back, come down to the front, go to the back. And let's just take a moment. Ask the Holy Spirit what He might need, what He, what he wants to say. Yeah, in Jesus' name. That would be awesome.